Hello everyone, welcome back again. My name is Jesse, and in this session of the tutorial, I'll be trying to see how to make our data set that we worked on previously stationary, right? So there are several methods that you can use to make a data set stationary. So these are some of the methods you can use. So the first method is to use difference, right? So in using difference, there are two main methods. You can use a pandas diff function to enable you, you to make your data set stationary, or you can use this particular format, right, of finding the difference between these ones by the previous one minus the current one. So that is a particular one, format or formula you can use to make your data set station using difference, right? This is a seasonal difference in which you are going to use the same option, but because the seasonal, you're using the particular season as your shift, right? So the next method is to use transformation. So transformation, you have several of them. You have power transformation, you have log transformation. So you can use numpy log function to enable you to stabilize your non-consistent values. So now let's see how to repeat it. So I'm just going to load our data set that we have previously. We realized that we had df.plot for the previous one that we had. This was what we were working with. And then this was not stationary at all. It was a very bizarre a very bizarre plot, right? It was not stationary. It's a not stationary data. Now let's see how a stationary data looks like so that you have an idea how it's going to be. So let's go to dfst right, for stationary. Then I'm going to we had in our data set that is stationary. It's going to be our daily. Right, so this data set is stationary. So if I check for dfst.plot, I'm going to see the difference between the previous one and this one. Okay, so this is how a stationary data set looks like. Right? So this is how it is. So we are trying to transform this particular plot, which is not stationary, into something like this, right? So that so that's what we try to do. Now let's see how to do that so in doing that there are several ways you can do that but it's very very advisable that you reformat your data set so there are several methods you can reformat it by converting the date column right as an as a time index right as a date time index so there are two methods you can use this particular method or you can use the second method of setting the index so let's see that one so i'm just going to read in everything so let's go to df1 then let's read the entire stuff So this is going to be our data set, to be our flight data set, perfect, so this is our flight data set. Then we are passing, because we have already seen our data set that it has a date column, we are passing that date column, you can set this one as true if you want, and then we are going to be passing the index column as dates, right? So now it's totally different, so df.1.head, so we said now we have the dates as the index, right? Which is very, very interesting. So, this gives you the option of doing some interesting stuff. By this particular option, you can select this, you can select by this, so it's going to be DF1. And if I want to select only 2005, you can easily do that. So, it's going to be 2005. I'm going to select all of them for me perfectly. So, by the same option, in case I want to select multiple. I want to select multiple ranges or maybe between two different ages. I can also use the same thing. So it's going to be 2005. Then another one is going to be 2006. So that now I just selected 2005 to 2006. That is the advantage of setting the date, setting the index right as the date, right? Or the date time index. That is the advantage of it. So with it, I can even plot that particular option. And only I can even plot only this one. So let's see the plot. Perfect. So that I need to only plot for only just two years. January and then January 2005 and then up to January 2007. The advantage of that, the moment you use that option, it gives you the option of getting the dates here. Right? So now you have the January, April, July, October, January. Very interesting. So now let's see how to face our issue. So the first method of facing our issue is that we are going to, let's plot the entire stuff that we have so far. We're going to be one plus plus. Perfect, right? So we said we have the days column here. So let's see how to transform this into a stationary data. So one of the methods that we're using is that using a difference. So in using a difference, yeah. So the first, as we already learned, you can use the pandas diff, or you can use the normal option, the formula. It is going to be the formula is going to be y t, right? Then y t for the time minus y and t minus one. Right, so you can use this particular formula. So let's see how to do that. So we have our df1, then we had our number of flights. 
So it's going to be, uh, we're going to find a difference between them. So it's going to be the same channel we have here. So let me copy this one here. Minus this dot shift. You are shifting by one, right? You are shifting just by one point or one period. So if you do that, now if I go back and I plot it again, so df one dot plot. Now it's going to be a certain idea, that's it. Okay, so the night is better, right? This is totally different from this one. Right, so now this data has been transformed to become a stationary. This is it. You can work with it. Very, very interesting. Very, very nice. So you can even check for the mean of it by using the normal one. Let me copy that. So now let's see how to use that plot. The mean plot to see whether this one is actually stationary. So I'll paste it one here. So this one df1. And then let's see what it's going to give to us. If you see that now, if you check the mean, it is passing through the line very well. Right? Very, very well. Better than the previous one. So that means that this is now stationary. Now let's see the next method of trying to make a data set stationary using the pandas diff. This is going to be using pandas diff. So how do we do that? So using the pandas diff, we can just use the same thing that we did. So let's call it df diff. Right. Then we're going to use the df1 that we had previously. But because this one has already been changed, let's reread this one again. So I'll reread it again and save it instead of one. Let's make it two, right? Perfect. So this is what we are trying to do. Trying to use the diff to do that, right? Perfect. So this is the odd one out. Now let's see how to use the diff. So it's going to be df diff. Then I'm going to pass in this particular value. So it's going to be our df2 dot diff. Right, then we need to pass in our period. So period. Let's put period. Let's go to one. Let's set that one. So now we have our difference using the pandas diff. Now if I plot this, so df here dot plot, and I could see that it is perfect. I said that now it is stationary. Very, very interesting. I can even use the same thing that we did for the histogram. The bell shape and see the difference of what you are getting so far. So let's try that one of a kind KDE. Perfect. So now it is better, right? It is almost symmetric, right? Almost not that bad, but it's almost symmetric. So that is one of the advantages of using a diff, right? So this, these are the two main methods of trying to find it using a difference to make your data set stationary. Now let's see the next method of using the log transformation. Sometimes it may fail, sometimes you have to tweak it. So let's load our data set again to have a clean one. I'll copy this one. Let's load panda. So import numpy rather numpy np because we using numpy to do our log transformation. Then let's read this is it. So this is going to be three. Using numpy, right? So let's see. So now we have our df3. Then one of the ways of trying to do that is that you, you're just going to pick a particular value and then face it out. So let's save that s2 for the number of flights. They're transforming the number of flights only, right? Okay, so this. Then now let's transform this. It's going to be our transform df. Then it's going to be our numpy.log s2. So we can actually plot this transform df plus plot. Then it's going to give us some very, very bad plot. <laughs> okay, so it's, it's not that it's not that nice. Better. So there are some things that you can also do to make it interesting, right? So in case you have any idea of how to make it interesting, you can put it inside the comments below. So that is how to transform your your station non stationary data to a stationary data using the difference method, which is the one I prefer, or the log transform method. Right? So these are some of the some of the ways of trying to transform your non stationary data set to a stationary data set. Now we can move on to the next step of trying to work with Facebook. Of it. But before then, let's try and decompose. So now let's see how to decompose a data set, right? So decomposing means that you're trying to find the trends and seasonal. You're trying to open up all the components that your data set can give us. So let's use that model. 
then let's see how to do that so this uh the one we are trying to have made session id right dot head this is the one that you are trying to work with so we have set the date time as date the index as date right and then now we can try and go okay but before we move on to deleting it let's see something so we have a missing value here so we don't need this missing value we have to shift it up right so how do we do that so it can be df one then i'm going to move it from that particular option right instead of it being from here let's move it from one post right to so build that particular one of to help us so let's read it and see so this is how it's going to so that this missing value is not work it's not going to be there so that you can do a decomposition very well so let's decompose it with this our function so have this particular plot here already this is it. so we're just using the decompose seasoning decompose from start model then we are going to set this one as one down right otherwise it's going to give us an error so let's try that one perfect so this is the decomposition right so we have the observed going up like that because it's stationary we have the trend it's going up in this way we have the seasons and we have the residual right? so that's how to decompose your data set with start model now let's move on to the next session of trying to work with facebook profit thank you and stay blessed